we in this segment we're going to study the what a constraint optimization problem is using a production planning example. So Galaxy Industry uh, manufactures two types of water guns, Space Ray and Zephyr. For Space Ray, the profit is eight dollars per dozen. For Zephyr, the profit is five dollars per dozen. So in order to manufacture one dozen of Space Ray, it requires two pounds of special plastic and three minutes of production time. And similarly, in order to produce one dozen of Zephyr, it requires one pound of special plastic and four minutes of production time. And also we know the resources available for manufacturing for plastics is a thousand pounds of plastic and we have 2400 minutes of production time available for production. So a simple problem that we try to solve is how many dozen of each water guns we should produce if our goal is to maximize profit. So I want you to uh, pause the video for a moment and think about how you would go about solving this problem. You are in good company if your solution is to uh, produce only space ray because it's, it's the more profitable product of the two. So let's t now take a look to see uh, what is the profit that we can make if we only produce uh, space ray. The plastic resource constraint says we have a thousand pounds of plastic available and time production time we have 2400 minutes. So since for for number of space ray since for each dozen of space ray it takes two pound of plastics. So if we only consider the plastic constraint we should have a thousand divided by two which is five hundred dozen of space ray. Now if we consider the time constraint 2400 minutes divided by for each dozen of space ray consumes three minutes of production time. So that should give us 800 dozen of space ray. And since 500 is less than 800, we know the maximum number of space ray we can produce is 500. And uh, since we use up over a, th a thousand pounds of uh, plastic for manufacturing space ray, the number of zapper we can produce will be zero because we don't have any plastic available. So let's calculate what is the profit so far. So it will be 500 dozens of space ray. We know for the, the coefficient for profit for space ray is $8. So that will be times 8 plus we manufactured zero dozens of zapper and the profit per dozen is five dollars. So that gives you four thousand dollars in total profit. Now the question is, is this the maximum profit? You should not be surprised that if I tell you it is not the maximum profit achievable. So one suspicion might come from noticing that despite we use up all the plastic as one of the resource, we have some production time left unused by only pr producing space ray. Let's calculate how much uh, time is left. So we have 500 dozens of space ray for each dozen of space ray, it takes up three minutes of production time. So the total production time consumed is 1500. And 
we have 2400 minutes available. So that gives us 900 minutes of production time left unused. So in order to uh, confirm that this large quantity of unused time, production time, might lead to a reduced profit, we can try a different option. Let's call it option two. So this time, instead of using up all plastic for space ray, we instead only manufacture 450 dozens instead of 500 dozens. So let's calculate if we man manufacturing 450 dozens, how much plastic are we gonna use? So it'll be 450 times two pound per dozen, that gives us 900 pounds. And since we have 1,000 pounds, we would have 1,000 minus 900 equal to 100 pounds available for zapper. And for time constraint, 450 times 3, because it takes 3 minutes, so that should give us 1,350. So that should leave us 1050 minutes of production times for zappers. Then we use the same logic we applied earlier to figure out how many dozens of zappers we can produce. So you have 100 plastic, 100 pound of plastic left over divided by one pound per dozen of zapper. So that should produce 100 dozens of zappers. And similarly, we have 1050 pounds of pl uh, production minutes left divided by four minutes per dozen for zapper. That gives us 262.5 dozens. Again, since 100 is smaller than 260.5, the maximum number of dozen of zipper we can produce is 100. Now let's recalculate what is the profit associated with option two. So we will have 450 times eight, which is the profit coefficient, plus 100 times five, which is the coefficient for zapper. That gives you 4,100. So 4,100 is greater than 4,000. So this confirm my statement earlier that 4,000 is not the optimal or maximum profit achievable. So now what can we do? So can we keep decreasing the space rate and increasing zapper to hope maybe the profit might plateau at some numbers by tri trial and errors? Uh, no, because there will be too many trials and errors you need to uh, conduct. And also, in this simple problem, we only have two products. And we only have two constraints. So in a more difficult problems, we might have many more products and many more constraints. So this trial and errors approach cannot even be conducted in a more complex problem. So this is a typical problem that we describe as a constraint optimization problem, where our common sense is no longer sufficient to guide us to make the right decision. And also, the simple arithmetic we applied earlier for this example is no longer sufficient to solve this kind of problem. And that is where, where the linear programming, which is the concept we're going to introduce next, come to rescue. So linear programming will be the solution 
that we're going to apply to solve this partic particular type of constraint optimization problem. And step one for linear programming is the so-called formulate a mathematical model. The idea is to describe this galaxy industry using alg algebraic expression. And let's go through the details to understand how this can be done. So the, the decision we try to make is how many dozens of each water guns that needs to be produced in order to maximize profit. So here we introduce the first terminology, decision variable. Variable. Meaning variable is the term that describes a quantity that varies. And in this case, we can use x sub 1 to indicate number of dozens of space ray dozen that need to be produced in order to maximize profit and similarly we can use x2 x sub 2 to indicate number of zapper So we call these two unknown quantity as two decision variables. So the second terminology we need to uh, introduce is the so-called objective function. So in this case, objective, our objective is to maximize profit. And we call it a, an objective function because we can quantify the objective. In this case, it's profit expressed in dollar amount. So in this case, if we produce x1 amount of space rate, then the associated profit will be a times x1. Here, again, a is the profit coefficient. And similarly, if we produce x2 amount of zebras, the associate profit will be 5x2. And then our, so this is the expression of total profit if we manufacture x1 amount of space drain, x2 amount of zebra. And our goal is to maximize. Our goal is to maximize this expression. So maximize this expression is the objective function. This is the decision variable. This is the objective function. Now, similarly, we could translate these two resources constraints into an algebraic expression. For example, if we manufacture x1 amount of space ray knowing the coefficient for plastic consumption is 2 so 2x1 plus 1 is the plastic consumption coefficient for zapper plus 1 times x2 needs to be less than or equal to a thousand because that's we only have that much that many pounds of plastic available for production. So in this way, we use this algebraic inequality to describe the physical consumption, the physical uh, constraint uh, associated with plastic available for manufacturing. And similarly, we can apply the same logic to write the production time constraint as a algebraic uh, inequality. So in this case we have 3x1 plus 4x2 the sum of the two quantities 
equals to the total production time consumed. Again, so that quantity needs to be less than 2400. So we call these two constraints. And we use ST, the abbreviation to mean subject to. So we are trying to maximize this expression subject to these two constraints. But there are two more implicit constraints so far we have not mentioned. The first one is x1 needs to be greater or equal to 0. Similarly, x2 needs to be greater than or equal to 0 because, of course, we cannot manufacture negative quantity of either products. So this describes, this is, a, this is what we, we describe as a mathematical model for, as a first step for linear programming. And again, this is nothing but a F algebraic translation of the galaxy example we have been studying for the last 25 minutes.